Hi guys, PJ here. Today we're taking a look at 4K gaming on a budget, PC gaming more to the point, and can it be done without the need for 1080 Ti's and things like that and the latest Intel or Ryzen processor? Can it be done without breaking the bank? You could argue that both Xbox and PlayStation have done their take on it. You know, you've got the Xbox One X, you've got the PlayStation 4 Pro. Both have their own merits. Obviously, the Xbox One X being a, a more powerful unit. But they are still crippled by a very slow netbook CPU. Okay, they are getting very good results though. And a lot of PC gamers are like, well, hang on, I don't, I don't game in 4K, me included. However, PC is about choice, as we all know. You can have your eye... FPS or you know you can have your your resolution you can have both if you've got the money simple as that but today we're concentrating on budget systems and the reason I'm doing a budget system is because my current system uh, is sort of coming to the end over the next few months I'll be building a top-end Ryzen system and I've actually got the case over there I've got a new case ready to go and some other bits and bobs so this current system being an FX8350 at 4.2 and an R9290X 4 gigabyte card running 16 gigabytes of 1833 RAM is a, a sort of how can I put it more in line with normality yeah price wise okay it's not uh, it's not the cutting bleeding edge system that I'm hoping to build at the moment like I say but uh, it does the job still so can we game at 4k on something like this so if you're an AMD user what do you need can you do it are you going to be up there with the Xbox One X with dated hardware can it be done well You've also got another option, of course, you can go ultra wide, which is what we're on right now. Now, ultra wide not being uh, the same as 4K, obviously, if you've got a 4K ultra wide display, you're actually running tons more pixels than a normal 4K telly. So, what I'm going to do is run this on my ultra wide now. We'll keep an eye on the FPS and everything. It's completely maxed out, okay? All the graphics are maxed out on it, they're all set to the maximum. And then I'll switch over and show you 4K TV footage. Okay, and I'll show you what I did to the graphics to get it to run at 4K and if I did it successfully. So if we continue the campaign, I'll skip the loading for you. Okay, and we're into game. Now, you've got to remember on the original Xbox One when it was launched, I believe this game was like 900p. Uh, most of the time it was sort of 25 frames per second. It did not run well. But don't get me wrong, it was still playable and it looked great on the Xbox One. This is the normal Xbox One when it first launched. So much so when the PC release came out, everybody thought, well, it's CryEngine, it's going to be a bit taxing, and that's why I've chose this game. Okay. Now, I can already spot something just moving. The con I'm using a, an Xbox controller. Yeah? I can see moving around here, we're getting what looks like screen shimmer or tearing. Now, I'm on a FreeSync monitor, so that is, you know, that is literally not good. FPS... Yeah, 70 odd, probably going to drop to 60 odd when we get outside. Let's have a look at this vista here. Uh, 67. So you more than double the frame rate and a hell of a lot more pixels than the original Xbox One version. Yeah. So being ultra wide display, we are running a lot more pixels, and we are running, like I was saying, fully maxed graphics. There you go. Everything very high. And if we go to advanced, everything is at the max. Ten goes to high. There is no very high. Okay, we haven't got a frame rate lock on uh, for obvious reasons, and we haven't got VSync on either. It does look stunning. I'm tempted to put a VSync on though, so we'll just do that. I shouldn't have to do it. Like I say, that is really, you know, in a way, that's the coding, not too good. Uh, VSync enabled, that's going to knock my FPS right down. Lock FPS, I think it locks it to 30. Yeah, it does. That's not acceptable. <laughs> That's if it will lock to 60, eh? There we go, 60. That's better. That's much better. Okay, now the graphics look fantastic. So if you've got the choice between ultra wide. Oh dear, good start. I played this for a while, guys. Why won't it attack? <laughs> oh, it wants me to pick the arrows up. Hold on. Yeah, but. We got a glitch, guys. It won't pick the arrows up and it won't fight. Look, it's just going through them. Oh, that didn't work. Oh well, we found a bug. That didn't take long, did it? 
Look, we cannot actually attack this guy. That's quite amusing. We're doing a technical video here and we found bugs and glitches. So be it. So anyway, we've got a lock 30 and we've got everything maxed. And it's using, what, 3.6 gigabytes of VRAM. Okay. So uh, not too bad. Nice. It's whether you prefer it on ultra wide or you prefer it on your big flash 4K TV. There's a choice because not many PC games will support HDR. If you've got a HDR 4K TV, there's a few, but not many. Mass Effect Andromeda, stuff like that. Um, so you've got a choice there. My personal choice is actually ultra wide. If you like, I say, if you've got the choice, I don't see the point in running all the extra pixels. Pick the. Well, we can fight now, but we can't pick the arrows up. That's different. Okay, we'll just fight these off and then we'll have a look at uh, swapping over to the 4K telly. Ooh, he rather hit hard, didn't he? Of course, this game originally being a Kinect game and they adapted it to. Uh, Get out of the way a minute. Well, well, I wouldn't say that being a Kinect game, um, you know, it sort of hindered it. It was early in the development process when the game was Kinect and it switched over to being a proper game, you, you know, as Xbox came to near release. So what we'll do now is switch over to the 4K footage that I captured earlier on and uh, we'll see how it performs and what we had to do to actually achieve a locked frame rate and for a smoother experience. Okay, so... Here's the 4K footage I captured earlier on. Uh, this is a, a true 4K, a native 4K, and I quickly realised I was getting screen tear, as you could probably imagine on that sort of res. There you go, 3840 by 2160 look. Yeah. So I enabled the V-Sync, and also enabled the FPS lock in the end, which is 30 FPS. But you've got to remember, we are trying to run this game at 4K. So this is sort of Xbox One X standards possibly above who knows it depends if it will run ultra settings or not i mean you can see the the detail there in absolutely everything is fantastic so if the xbox one x can run at this sort of you know level we are in for a treat if you're a console gamer or you know even a pc gamer that is thought about dabbling in consoles it's going to look fantastic this is 30 fps yeah so you've got to bear in mind this is sort of console level the only problem running it at this res on a PC as I have found you'll notice momentarily it stutters and that's because it's loading in assets this would have to be installed on an SSD on a PC to, to stop that happening or run on a, obviously a much faster PC but this is gaming on a budget so what you could do put it on an SSD and it will get rid of the uh, loading stutter so we're turning a few bits and bobs down here to keep that locked 30 okay it, it did dip below it a little bit so as, the, as we sort of play through i was going through and i was fiddling around with some of the settings to see if we can get the true 4k i mean we've got temporal anti-allies in there just not really going to be needed at that resolution yeah um cpu usage was very low as you can see there's nothing going on really at that it's uh, it's an easy enough game to run cpu wise gpu though we we're on 3952 yeah nearly four gigabytes of vram used that's that's quite a lot and it's an older game of course there is that but apart from the stuttering when it loads and which hits the fps heavily when it loads some textures in or a new area in it was dropping down to 17 fps yeah so these glitches could be eliminated completely using an ssd but into battles and stuff once it settled down and it loaded everything in we were dropping to sort of 27 28 fps so it needed a little bit more fettling to be able to get to uh, its target 4k locked 30. Just like I say, bear in mind the original Xbox couldn't even keep a lock 30 at 900p and the settings were only medium and high, not all highs. Okay, So, you know, you've got to think along those lines if you're a budget PC gamer. I'll just finish this battle up quickly and we'll go and, uh, go and tweak a few bits and bobs. Like I say, FPS look is fluctuating wildly. I just saw a 21 there, 25. So it needs adjusting a bit more. We're not quite there. We've still got everything set very, very high. So we'll just go into the menu options shortly. There we go. 
what does it take to get it to a locked 30? Personally, I'd rather pray it at a lock 60 and run it on an ultra wide monitor with everything, all bells and whistles switched on. But this is, you know, like I say, trying to get it to lock 30 on 4K TV. Still at 4K, look. We've disabled the um, native upscaling. We don't need that at all. We're still on full screen and advanced graphics, as you can see. High, high, normal, high, high. Well, not wanting to drop the quality of the game, leaving all the shader qualities and the textures all at high. So we drop the animation quality down to normal and uh, see what it does then. Okay, empty courtyard, no loading to do, 30 frames per second. Did feel silky smooth on a controller, on an Xbox controller, it felt brilliant. Come up to the top of here and we'll have a look over a vista. See how that did. And just for reference, I could not upload the 4K straight to YouTube. Okay, so yes, this is running the YouTube 1080p experience for you. Simple as that. I wish I could lo upload 4K, but I'd probably have to be there all day waiting for it to happen if they'd let me do it. <laughs> Which they don't. So anyway, let's have a quick run through this area. No slowdown yet. Staying at 30. Oh, 27. There we go. Is it loaded in that vista? Still 30, so yeah, sort of acceptable, I guess. There we go. There's 30 locked. Still 30. VRAM usage still really high. We're on 3.8 gigabytes of VRAM. Just saw the game loading the texture there on the dead body. So, SSD. Must install on an SSD for this to run nicely at 4K. They're cheap enough nowadays, even if you only buy, buy like 120 gig or something small, just to put the, the game on that you're currently playing, if you want to play it at 4K, it's worthwhile. Okay, so we've got a pretty solid experience up to now. It's uh, fluctuating a little bit, like now, look, loading, checkpoint, bit of a stutter there. Don't think you could probably eliminate that. Right, 27, 24 FPS, still some tweaking to do there really, it's not ideal. Cutscenes. They're in engine cutscenes, but they're still cutscenes. Pretty smooth. They're okay. They were very stuttery on the original Xbox. Okay, so let's just cut to my final tweak to get this locked to 30. Okay, well, without sort of starting to sacrifice image quality, and by that I mean, you know, the, the level of detail you can see in the distance as well, it didn't end up worthwhile dropping any more settings. Really, the game could have been done with being installed on an SSD. That was its main downfall. Other than the stutter with the loading areas and the FPS dropping a little bit, at 4K on an older AMD system, this is probably as good as you're going to get. Okay, You're way, way above the level the game was designed to be run at. And you're certainly up there with the levels of what the new Xbox uh, One X will run at. Probably higher if anything, and definitely higher than the PS4 Pro with all its checkerboard rendering. The consoles at the moment are having a decent lease of life, the games are looking very, very good on them. You want that on PC? You might need to spend a little bit more money than what you've already got. Certainly more money than what the consoles are going to be. Even at £450 for the new Xbox, your equivalent PC to run it, you're not really going to get change out of sort of £900 you are going to need a hefty system. The only thing is you will have the luxuries of choosing your own display, your own FPSs, your own customization to everything. Console, closed architecture, it's up to the uh, the devs, you know, what you end up with sort of thing. And with that, I hope this video was of some help for you. If you've got any game at all that you'd like me to try and run in 4K on a system, you know, that's a couple of years old or so now, please get in touch, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and bye for now.